obviously. Should open up for a few new picks. I was going to talk about Sejuani for, for Diamond not being a new pick, but more one that you can take now that Jaman has been nerfed a little bit and Sejuani is somewhat getting better because of that. But uh, HDK is saying, well, Diamond, at least Sejuani that's gone. Obviously, a Rek's Eye first pick is going to mm -hmm. come from H2K unless Gambit bans it away. Yeah, it's very possible at this point. You can see oh, but he's getting comfortable in that chair. The Sivir, the Ani banned away for Gambit Gaming. And there are the coaches taking their time. Let's see what H2K bans last. They have one more available, and they take yep. away Zed from Betsy. So if Gambit does not ban Rex I now, they give it over to H2K, and then we know exactly. Okay, okay. Well, it is banned. I think instead. you predicted that correctly, yeah. Then we suddenly go back to the likes of Lissandra as a potential first pick. Ari is open. LeBlanc, now that Cassadin is kind of off the table, and Zed is banned, suddenly LeBlanc becomes a bit of a power pick in that mid lane we see often here in Europe. But we also have to look at the likes of Nar. And Mao Kai for Oduamne. Not his first picks, maybe the Nar, but he's undefeated when he's playing Nar and Mao Kai. He's so good in tanks. Whenever he's playing Lissandra, he's kind of meh, I'm gonna say. He's still good on it, but not as good as when he's playing these big frontline tanks. It's really been the way for him, and that means from Gambit's side, you have to be careful what you take in the early picks because you don't want to allow HK to take like a Mao Kai in the last rotation which will then work perfectly into whatever combo you just pick, like a burst combo, whatever, the Maokai just shuts down completely. So you always have to worry about the Maokai trap, I know Leviathan likes to call it, and I'm sure they're aware of it. We mentioned the Ari before, now that there's been a few mid lane bans, and obviously uh, LeBlanc could also be the option for them, could be the response for Betsy, but this is simply taking mid laners away from Betsy alone, because he's played Ezreal, that was like 1-0-2 performance, basically. He didn't really do anything in that game, that was the first game he played on stage. Then he's played Zed and Ari every other game, and he's been great on them. You ban the Zed, you get the Ari because the Rek'Sai was banned by Gambit. Suddenly now you target him and he's champion pool. Yeah, and it's also been one of Ryu's more successful champions oh, yeah, yeah, of course. across the board. So it makes a lot of sense to accomplish just the double whammy there. Let's see what Gambit Gaming answers with. Both teams really so far taking their time on the pick and ban timer. Yeah, Morgana has been a massive pick for Gambit. It can be played in mid lane, in top lane, and in support, so you don't really tilt too much. Mm -hmm. When you lock it in, and what they have done before is take out Morgana early, and then take the likes of a cannon as the last pick, and then swap Morgana to support, and then somewhat surprise them. In this game, though, oh well, for now, we're not going to get Morgana. Instead, this Tristana, we've seen it before, last week against Rocket. It was not a pretty game from Gambit, but they did manage to win it. And once they grouped in the late game, it took Pinoy about two seconds to destroy a tower. Because you can put your E, the Neutristana, obviously, you can put the E on the tower. Four hits, or three hits, max charge, explodes, damage to the tower as well, you yeah. destroy them. It comes in like a wrecking ball, that's for sure. <laughs> Gambit Gaming, they've got their bot lane fleshed out. We could still see the Morgana. I want to see if H2K decided to pick it up. It was that old yes. fresh counter. It's a possibility. Uh, Kasing has been kind of the king of these initiations, and Morgana can enable those. You hit those bindings the way you want to. Let's see what they take here, though. And we really see for both teams here, they try to take away from the new guy. Kissing is all about Thresh and Annie for him, mainly. Annie's banned. Ari first pick, okay, we take a Thresh. We don't take Morgana in this round here because we want to get this support pick for Eddie to deny it from Kissing. And that simply means Morgana, who would have fit in perfect with Tristana to fast push down towers, Black Shield and her, she will destroy them. Pinoy still <laughs> chilling around. He is very relaxed about I this. I mean, he already got his AD carry, yeah, man. He's, he's, he's done. good. He's good to go. Uh, in H2K side, yeah, Lulix is going to go ahead and go with the Jarvan this time again. Oh, no. Oh, Come on, go oh, Victor. Oh, oh. I you wanted, see you wanted to see the Victor, huh? It's been played, obviously, a few times in Korea. Yeah. By uh, G Tigers. Hopefully, we can see it at IM Katowice as well. Oh, yeah, coming up. Yeah. yeah up featuring this week. team, too, Gambit Gaming. For sure. Let's we'll see what they can do and if they are able to keep the winning streak. 7 0 yes. now. Well, they've got, to, they've got to keep it going now if yes. they want to carry exactly. it into Katowice. It started 0 5. Then Leviathan came in, and the team really started working well together. Obviously, Betsy joined in later once they already won three games, but now seven games in a row. If they beat H2K, they have Giants tomorrow who just lost to MYM. Then we're suddenly looking at 9-0, and we have that 13-5, the dream. Oh! Gambit. They do lock in uh, the Evelyn. This is what they were talking about with some different kind of stuff. Okay. And we see the Lulu. So I think Evelyn jungle is pretty trash, but uh, if there's any uh, Whoa. if there's any jungler who can pull it off, it's Diamond, who used to be a fantastic Evelyn player. She did have a small buff, I think we can say. Some would argue it might be a nerf came in, uh, coming in where your E now is two strikes that apply on hit effects. Mm -hmm. 
So let's say you do you start a Crooks, which I would expect from him. You smite that one, so you get this, the obviously the two auto attacks or the auto attacks for the stuns. And you then have their E to give these double auto attacks. So you charge up the stun a bit faster from the Crooks, and that allows you to jungle jungle a bit better early on. I think that's one of the things we're gonna see from Diamond. And then he needs to get to late game on this Evelyn here. Still, fairly strong damage wise later on. I would expect also some like AP AP from him, maybe AP tank or just pure AP. We're going to have to see what he will do. Exciting, at least, with a new jungler. Yeah, that's for sure. I don't think HGK expected that one. They will complete their lineup with a Corky and a Maokai. So Odawamne will be on that tanky initiator once again. Gambit still have an option. They can send the Lulu top if they want to, or they can keep it mid for Betsy. Let's see what they do here. There still are a yeah. lot of assassins available on the field, and Betsy does like to play them. And we mentioned this Maokai trap beforehand. H2K love to take it in one of the last rotations where they see, okay, how much damage or what kind of damage is there on Gambit's side? It's a lot of burst damage, then we take Maokai into it. We use the ulti to kind of like nullify their burst coming in and he can stay alive. In this case, because it's going to be most, oh, it's going to be what we would assume a Lulu mid lane and then a carry top lane for Copy Shot. Cannon has been a big pick for him in the past, but with Lulu mid lane, it's very easy for Maokai to dive onto the Tristana, who's going to be the main damage dealer late and kind of like shut him down or try and remove him from the fight because Lulu herself is not going to solo kill targets. It's going to be all about Pinoy. And now it's gonna also going to be about this Kennen, who sadly is somewhat countered by Maoko in the team fights because of that big ulti, because you can lock him down before he even gets into a team if you have no flash. So Gambit in a bit of a little bit of a tricky spot because of that Maoko coming in, but a full late game Tristana can take care of business. That's very true. And, and I'm still really wanting to see what they do with this jungle Evelyn, too. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. We haven't seen quite so many of the stealth champions really make their uh, their way back around LCS-wise lately. And, you know, that element of surprise is very, very valuable. You mentioned there were a couple of those buffs. See if that's considered to be enough. I know you may not believe in it, but... Well, I mean, again, Diamond, so, he is the guy that yes, can make that's the thing. things work that should not. If I saw... Evelyn in my solo queue game, I would be a little bit worried to say, okay, let's see what happens. But when Diamond is picking it, I trust in Diamond to do well. So if you see Diamond in your solo queue game, what do you do? Well, then I say, hallelujah, LP for me. All right. I suppose that's confidence right there. Sadly, I'm not uh, really up with Diamond yet. Ah, I'll have to give it I'll some time. There. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, these have been fully fleshed out. Can't wait to see how this one happens going on. There we go. Sh handshakes all around from Leviathan and Prawley as they walk off the stage. To get this one started, this is going to be a, a different kind of game. We'll see if Gambit Gaming keeps that streak or if it's H2K. That's going to be yeah. interesting to see. Fairly standard comps for the two teams, except for maybe the Evelyn. Yeah. We can talk about that in game because obviously now you guys need to go to Twitter. Yeah, tell us. What do you think? Who's going to keep their streak alive? Tweet us at LOL Esports with H2K win or GMB win. I hope you're as pumped as the crowd here because we're getting on stage for H2K versus Gambit Gaming. 7-0 Gambit, 6-0 H2K, undefeated with Kessing so far in the LCS. Can Gambit be the first team to shut him down? Because he's really been fantastic for the H2K guys. Oh yeah, completely revitalized them it seems. And you know, their, their sync, their synergy week over week has just shown so much improvement. A lot of credit to Oda Wamne for really stepping up to oh, yeah. these big MVP last week. bruisers. Yeah, I mean, he was fantastic on Maokai two games. He's gone for it yet again. kabushard has got his work cut out from, especially if they offer standard lanes. And the thing is, yeah, H2K's comp. First of all, you have a decent level one because you have a Morgana in itself, the binding. If you do manage to catch someone uh -oh. like Kabushard or Force of Flash, could be oh, the case. Go for it. But their combi is super standard for them. You have Oda Wamne on a tank. He's undefeated on Maokai, undefeated on, on Nar. He needs to be in their front line. We, saw, we heard probably talk about the engage onto Gambit. Well, you have Javan, you have Marco as well to do that. Rio and Ari, standard champion for him. Very strong laning phase, strong mid game, strong all around, honestly. And then you have Yarnan here who can do well in the laning phase on a Corgi, get level 6, get towards the Trinity Force, and then they like to use him to simply early push down towers. If he takes the bottom lane, well, then he goes straight to the top lane, he pushes in that one, and that's what Corgi is perfect with his Trinity Force, where barely any AD carries, especially not a Tristana, can hold him off and he will be able to pressure you and take your tower if you don't send more guys up there to defend. So H2K, super standard comp for them. And they know exactly how to play it. Yeah, and they have already preempted the lane swap by making moves up there themselves. They should be able to spot this one. Well placed board sees Eddie and Pinoy. And they're going to actually ping out on Hyarnan on the side of Gambit. So everybody knows this is happening. we got the double lane swap going down. Lulex and Odawamne are going to jungle buddy it up for the red buff. 
Yes, yeah, so they see the dual lane from Gambit on the top side with these early walls they've placed. And they keep the, obviously, support and AD carry there to get the 2 and 2 lane. Still take the red buff. So they were basically setting up for if Gambit had been on the bottom side with Eddie and Pinoy, well, you would have started the red buff anyway to secure red and blue for yourself and not risk getting invaded on by all the members from Gambit on the bottom side. And now they managed to sneak it anyway. Diamond, of course, is aware of it, and he should be able to go for the red buff himself. Let's see if Lulex is going straight for him or if he's happy just trading standard buffs. Seems like he will be happy just doing walls for himself, so Diamond can get a red buff for himself now. Yeah, he certainly can. They will be able to trade it out if they want Diamond. So we had an opportunity to go mid, decided, okay, definitely got a chance. He's able to poke this one out or at least to drag it into a safer area thanks to the hate spikes. And Lulex throws down the rest of the wolves as he completes his jungle route, or starts to complete his jungle route, rather. Eddie and Pinoy are actually pushed quite far in, and this isn't that surprising, considering how low power the Tristana lane is yeah. early on. After the changes to Tristana, she got even weaker in the laning phase, and she really needs to get like a BF sword before she can start trading damage effectively because her E is now an AD ratio. So for that one to really start working for her. Yeah. Pinoy didn't seem too worried about it at the start no. of the game. No, he was, uh, he was lounging a bit. And it's been a thing for Gambit. They don't really care too much about how the bottom lane does in a 2-2 two two situation. It's a lot more about Betsy and Couple Shot in the laning phase. And that's one of the reasons we always see Diamond put so much focus on Couple Shot especially. He's been one of the big carries for them. And this top lane jungle synergy has been great. Really been paying off. A lot of teams have fallen simply behind because they try and fight them and they just end up getting outplayed. Kabushak gets a big lead, Diamond gets a big lead, and they use that to snowball. They kind of just leave Pinoy and Eddie to do their own thing in the 2 and 2. And they trust them too, that's what's important. You, when, you only, when you only have to go between the two solo lanes, it's not a long transit time. Nope. You can optimize your routes, and you know they really just trust Pinoy and Edward to really, not necessarily make the early plays, but to stay alive in lane. And you know your solo laners are strong enough players to carry if they do get a lead. Which has been a big deal for Gambit. Really, really strong individually. This time around though, they have Lulu mid lane. So this is a big change for Betsy from the REZ we normally see. Which would tell me we see less focus on the mid lane. As it's not that important to snowball the Lulu. And then potentially maybe Diamond going up and helping his dual lane get the Tristana rolling. Otherwise it's going to be all about Kapushan and Kennen. We've seen it before. He gets a great start. He takes over the game. Oh, yes, indeed. Edward and Pinoy still poking away, grabbing the farm that they can here and there. Really keeping up quite well in CS versus this lane of Yarnin and Kasing, who haven't really had too much of a chance to make some plays. Kasing now, though, is going on the roam. He should be able to pop down a few deep wards if he wants. Looks like he throws it down at the Krugs. And we're going to have to see if Gambit can survive this mid game. Coming in from H2K when you have Ari, when you have the Corky. To really start grouping up and having so much poke damage and all in, like team fighting potential from their side, where Tristana needs more time before she becomes effective. Kennen needs to get his hourglass as well before we're really gonna see him join the fights. And typically, especially into like double AP and in this case, two and a half almost with the Corky, we normally see Abyssal Scepter first from a Kennen, then into an hourglass. So there's two items needed for Oduamne. We know the Evelyn needs to go late game as well to really be effective. So for Gambit here, if they get a standard super slow early game where they can just sit and farm, that's heavily in their favor. As long as they don't fall too far behind to H2K's strong, strong mid game through this Kofi Ari. Yeah, the key, if they don't fall behind, that's kind of the point there. So H2K is going to be the ones looking to make sure that they have the edge in that one. So far, both the jungle has been relatively quiet. Lulex is going to wander through this river and find that there's a pink ward there just for the taking. Diamond been looking for an angle. He's been pretty unseen by this team, but that might be about to change. Lex just outside the range. There we go. He's going to get the vision proc. Hate spikes thrown down. The Whoop. flag, though, does go wide. Diamond will be able to get away. Expecting a little juke from Diamond. Didn't happen. We see the skirmishes for him on Evelyn here. So really looking to find Lulex and, like, duel him one-on-one. -on -one. That 20% damage reduction to true damage as well for him. So he's looking to be... Aggressive, not just sitting back and farming with a trailblazer on Evelyn. Despite her having a fairly weak jungle clear, she drops pretty low. But Diamond so far has been doing a good job farming. Yeah, he's definitely been keeping up here with this much more conventional pick from Lulex. So Kasim continuing to roam around and try to grab wards where he can. You can see Hyarnan actually hanging around 
uh, alternating between pushing on the tower. And yeah, you look at Diamond, that it gets so low when he does do his full clears, but he's able to make it out alive, and there hasn't been a lot of retribution yeah. from Lulex at all, who's actually hanging out in the bottom side trying to bait out Kappa Shard. Basically, Lulex is saying, I know you want to gank this, this bottom lane, and my laner is now pushing it. So you can see how Odo Amna is pushing the wave all the way up to the tower. So in case he was there all on his own and Diamond had been healthy, Gambit could set up a fairly easy gang onto him, like Force of Flash. That's why Lulex is going down to the bottom lane. It's not to gank Cabo Shard, it's just to wait. If there's a potential gank, he can counter gank. And then he just starts recalling, goes back to his clear, said, okay, the lane has now been somewhat reset. Main is a meeting in the middle now, which means my jungle or my top laner is now safe. I can back away. So that's all he's doing. He's respecting the fact that Gambit likes to put so much focus on the top lane. Meanwhile, these bottom lanes have just been uh, fighting quite a lot. We see this BF sword coming in, and suddenly Pinoy, he wants to trade now. The AD ratio is fairly good on the E, and he can start taking yeah. fairly good fights. Garnet found that out firsthand, so Edward also the ever-present threat. He does manage to land those hooks. It could be dangerous for this very squishy bottom lane. Lulex is going to find another pink with the help of Ryu. Well, Diamond keeps on clearing. They do spot him out with that ward, but they're not interested in diving on him. Oh my god, he's level 6 now. Going towards the Magus Enchant on his skirmishes. And then I wonder if we're going to see him go towards the likes of a Rylai's maybe, if he wants to be a little bit tanky. Because if you look at Gambit's comp here, there's not really any front line. Thresh is a support who's more focused on peeling for his carries than being in the front. Kennen obviously will dive in with the Hourglass. But if H2K times that correctly and disengages when Kennen goes in, or engages onto the Kennen itself, then suddenly Gambit doesn't have anything in the front to protect that carries. And the two tanks, Javan and Maokai from H2K, will have a fairly easy time then diving on to Pinoy, diving on to Betsy in the fight itself. So it's going to be a lot more about kiting around for Gambit and then trying to use these big AoE ultis like Evelyn and, and Kennen to zone. But now Diamond is going to stay out. alive first. Yeah, they're going to get away from it just for a moment, but they are in a little bit of trouble. So Teleport comes in to save the day. Kabushart moves in on Oda Wamne. They've got a lot of damage, and it looks like that is going to be first blood. It goes Whoa, to Kabushart, like. but wait, there we go. He's going to throw down his own ultimate as Ryu missed the charm, but still finds the damage. Lulex answers with a kill onto Kabushart. Now Diamond in hot pursuit of both. Can he pick them up with a hate no mana. Black and drag, he's got no more mana, as you said. And they will make their great escape. Top laner's traded. So quite a fight here in the mid lane. Teleport's coming in. Will teleport from Cabo Shard. Odo Amni, he roamed from the bottom lane up there. Ends up trading one for one. Both top laners dying. And H2K instantly leaving this top lane, rotating down to the mid lane, start pushing in, knowing that Gambit is fairly low after the fight. Get a few hits on the tower. And Odo Amni, because he had the teleport that Cabo Shard didn't, could instantly join the top lane. Should be able to push in the wave as well before anyone shows up. Nice little move here by H2K. Really using that TP advantage. And a bit of extra farm and XP. Yeah. They were able to do just that. Now Ryu and Lulex continue to roam together for just a moment. This time it might be for the purpose of picking that blue buff up. However, that is the case. So... Odawamne has really been unchallenged. Even now that he's swapped up to the top. How well is he going to fare in this 1v2 situation? Because he's still just sitting on the Catalyst and the double Dorans. I feel like the positioning from Pinoy and Edward is going to be too good for him to really take advantage of. Oh, he won't be able to kill them or anything. He's just going to basically farm. That's it. And even for Gambit, if they had kept Eddie on the top side, you invest a lot of resources onto one lane at once and completely giving up control of the bottom side of the map, which means H2K should be able to set up a fairly easy dragon. So that's why Eddie is not showing himself in the top lane. Instead, he's going down here. Pinoy can handle himself in a one-on-one. -on -one. Remember, you want to get this Tristana fed. Average Blade has been picked up after BF Salt, so he's aiming to kind of like lunge towards the two-item spike in Vintage Static Shift. So they leave him in the one-on-one, -on -one, give him a level advantage as well. And you keep four guys on the bottom side of the map, so you don't have to give up an easy dragon to H2K. Exactly. They bring Edward down to the bottom. He's going to land the hook, but it was Black Shielded very quickly. And they are going to wander out of lane after that. Lulex continuing to rove around and try to clear as many pink wards as he can. He does get the one. And he's getting pinged out by Gambit. We also see Cabo here. Not going for uh, that business. Oh, oh the he flays him into the box. Because Singh has a big bite out of his health taken, but the second win here from H2K. 
is going to be quite a lot, and they pull Kabushard out of the range of the Dark Binding. You can see how Kabushard was like, oh, should I go in or not? Can I kill this support here? But because Diamond was on the top side of the map, he was farming the Crooks, and there was no flash for Kabushard, he played it safe and smart, and he stayed back and said, okay, I'm not going to risk anything, because there's such a high chance of Ludwig's being nearby, and that was a good call by him. Not going all in for it. We'll still be dragging for H2K, as Diamond was not around the bottom side, so they will get it anyway. Obviously, no teleport from either of the top lanes. Yeah, have been weird for Kabushad anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the bottom side. <laughs> Would have been quite a short distance, but... Yeah, Gambit, uh, I feel like that was just kind of not necessarily... They played it very safely. H2K just had, had a better timing on the Drake. They were able uh, to take advantage of the fact that Diamond wasn't anywhere around. Not only was he on the top side, but he backed away. So they were able to get that well-secured Dragon. But now Gambit is focusing on this bottom side. Diamond is coming in. It, neither team knows this is a 3v3, however, but if Lulex does back away, then the table's turn. Because he's recalling H2K again, say fine. We're just going to play it safe. What these teams are doing here is, whenever you play against Evelyn, because it's so hard to spot her normally, you always think to yourself, okay, she's in my lane right now. I'm not going to go aggressive if I didn't know I have my backup ready. So as Lulex will recall him from the bottom side, Basically, we saw Yann and Kusing say, okay, we expect Evelyn to be here. We have to respect the fact she could be. So we just simply go back to our own tower once we clear the wave. Don't want to risk any stupid fights. Don't want to try and snowball Gambit suddenly. So that's all they're doing. And what H2K did before as well with that dragon that was so smart is you know that when Evelyn is just farming, she drops fairly low in the jungle. So if you don't see her gank any lanes, you should expect her be, to be jungling. And then she will never be on full HP. And you know she's going to be fairly squishy if she shows up. If she's recalled, well, that's perfect for you. If she comes in with 50% HP, you just engage on her with the Javan and kill her. Because there was no flash from the fight before from Diamond. And that's another reason for them being able to just take that Dragon. Because they hadn't seen Diamond in a while. And he's back to farming at the moment. Red buff is up for him. It's pretty stylistic of Gambit, too, to not try to contest the early Dragons unless they know they can get them for yeah. free. H2K, on the other hand, they know they're, they're much more methodical, as we mentioned a lot in the pregame. They're much more by the book. And, you know, okay, oh, we're going to go for Dragon. If we see someone on top, we're going to go and just not necessarily go for the big plays, but what will secure us the objectives. Now, Pinoy, he could be in some trouble here, taking extremely those. He flashes, and he heals and hops. Oh, that was close for the little Yordle. Stays alive, but this lane will be pushing... Diamond is here, he's fairly low on mana already. Once again, he's been back in that jungle. A lot of damage on the tower. The That's the question. H2K at the moment is the proactive team. Oh, they, he's spotted they're by the one. Snapling. Basically, H2K is the ones forcing these roams around the place around the map. Is Lulix going top lane to start the gank on Pinoy, force him back to base, so now this tower will go down, and there's no response from Gambit's side. They're the ones who've been sitting back in the lane. Let's see if they can do anything to Yannan, though. Yep, he's trying to move away from all the skill shots. However, the teleport in the back, they know this is happening. Lantern immediately is out of Wamne, comes the boxes up. Here comes Kasing as well. Eddie is gonna be in some trouble, but Kabushard's moving forward for Yarnin. The heal is baited out. He takes a Zanya's Hourglass as the tormented soil expires and they collapse on him. Odawamne picking that kill. So we have to remember, it's still Kabushard sitting in the bottom lane of the map with Eddie. So there's no TP advantage for Gambit to gain there. And because H2K set up that play in the top lane, Got the tower for it, had teleport ready on on uh, Oduamne, sorry. It simply meant as soon as Gambit tried to force a fight on the bottom side, well, he's just going to teleport down behind you, like he did right here. Beautiful setup again by H2K. They're so good at using teleports, they're so good at knowing where to push and where to be with your team. So they just teleport down behind. Yannin wasn't caught out at all. Turn it around, get a kill, get a tower more. Three out of turrets, first dragon as well for them. Yeah, and they, and they will be able to defend this one. They're making their way back they in should. time, and it's actually pinging this one out. I mean, as quick as Tristana can take down towers, you're not quite at that point yet yeah. with Pinoy, and he is going to have to back away from this one. Ryu is here, and Pinoy doesn't know where anyone else is, so he's going to take the rocket jump out immediately as he is joined by Eddie. Actually, he's not going to back away this time. They're going to go for a second win, but still, HK, better rotation so far. It has netted them a two and a half, or about 2,000 gold lead, and the dragon and three towers to none. And what we didn't see in the mid lane, where the tower went down, it was again Lulex showing up in the lane. He's been the active guy here in the early, early stages of this match. He's the guy saying, I'm going to push top lane. Okay, I'm going to roam up there now, get a gang on the AD carry, push it down. Okay, I'm going to go mid lane now because I know Tristana is again sitting in the top lane. I know there's a fight going on in the bottom lane, so I have information on at least four guys from Gambit. I can just walk straight into this lane. Ari and Javan together is still a very strong 2 and 2 skirmish, so we can safely push it in. There's nothing Evelyn and Lulu can do as a response. 
to that. So that's why they can safely push in these lanes and just decide, okay, where do we want to get our turret? Right there. Perfect. Big goal lead for them now. Well, big. 2,000 gold. But still, so early in the game, 16 minutes in, that's quite a lot. Yeah, and we're taking a breather here as we ascertain what the issue is. Looks like Raph's standing behind Eddie. Looks like he does have a keyboard issue. So as we uh, try to get that one resolved, yeah, 2,000 gold in the lead for HJK. A lot of that's off the back of the towers that they've got. Fairly low kill score. And again, this is just kind of H2K style of uh, rotating around the map and just trying to grab the objectives, be more focused like that. A, a bit like SK Gaming, but they're far less predictable in the way that they go about this. And Gambit, you know, they want to fight every angle you get. They want to flank and maybe try to get some assassinations on you, but they haven't been given those opportunities by H2K in this game. Right, and they don't have the comp to do it either. They need more time for them to really start being impactful because it's going to be so much about Tristana here for Pinoy. That's why they're keeping him in that top lane to just be on his own. If he can get to like level 9, first of all, so you got max rank on your E, basically means once you go to that tower, you do a lot more damage onto it, which is this comp is built around being able to fast push down towers when you have a little fresh peeling for Tristana. So they need more time before they can start making big plays on the side of Gambit, and H2K has been able to take advantage of it, especially through perfect teleports from Odo Omni. Exactly, exactly. So as we get back into this one, we've got a dragon about a minute away from spawning. H2K got that one quite easily last time. It's off the better rotation. Again, Gambit seems to be pretty top-heavy in this. Ryu has got his Spirit Rush available if he needs to get out of danger. They're not going to look at diving him right now. Edward just kind of oscillating between that mid and top side. But here come Diamond and Kalbashard to push away the mini wave. And we have seen Kabushard change his build a little bit. Normally he likes that Bizzle first, but because there is no front line on the side of Gambit, then he has gone for Outlast first to at least be ready for any fights and being able to engage in as the first man, then followed by Evelyn after. We see Diamond as well going for Locket for him. So we're going to get that AP tank-ish build coming oh. from him. Kabushard, he was caught for just a moment, but he throws down. The slicing Maelstrom, and there is the Zani's Hourglass to avoid the Orbit Deception, but Ryu will have a chance with a charm of the Flash to move away from it. And here comes Diamond. Has Ryu got in some trouble? He's going to get smited for just a second. Not enough damage on the hate spikes as he gets away. It is moving in, though. It's not over yet, Deficio. It is over now. Oh, now it is. Okay. <laughs> some big plays in that top lane. Flash from Kabushad to avoid the charm. And also Ryu staying alive and fighting in a 1v2. And... What happens now that two guys have to go top lane, even three with Eddie, despite him not being spotted, I think, by H2K? Well, you invest so many resources and players now on one side of the map that you will always lose on the other side. And H2K is saying, fair enough, you want to fight one versus two, you're not even getting a kill. We take a free dragon for ourselves, we push the bottom lane, we push the mid lane. There's just so much more control for them. Because Gambit at this point, in order to even get a kill, needs to use at least two players for it, and they didn't even manage to get it. Yeah, they weren't able to pick it off, and there is the hook with the Black Shield once again as the blue buff gets taken away. I'm not quite able to secure it. Looks like it goes over to Lulex. No real fights in the near future with that dragon going over to HK side. That is good for Gambit, though, because it does mean they can get closer to these two items, which they at least need on Tristana and the cannon before they really want to start fighting. And then the more the better later on in the game. But with these three outer turrets down and the threat of their potential fifth dragon later, it suddenly becomes a bit tougher for them. Odo Amno with the Righteous Law, he always likes to build it on Maokai. Mm -hmm. Use it to speed around, look for potential engages. Doesn't get anything this time. But Gamma did get the top tower. Wave a bit pushing down. Some goal for them. Yeah, they will get a little bit back, but they have to be careful. This mid tower now being fired on Garn and Oda Wane. Ryu in the middle. The charm gets dodged away by Betsy. Diamond is actually moving around this side, but Lulex is also there. It's going to be hard to set up the flank here. He does want to go for it. So far, we haven't seen too much out of this Evelyn, but again, that AP tanky build. Let's see if it helps. Yeah, that's a, a bit of an annoying thing when playing against Evelyn is standard wards doesn't really do too much for you in terms of trying to spot a flank. Have to invest in the pinks. Exactly, you need those pink wards. They can be played at least. Now, though. Diamond, there's a pink ward right here, so they can see him. They know exactly where he is, and that's why they can just push up on the tower. They see four guys defending, and they see the Evelyn on the side. No real threat for H2K in this case here. And another one on another tower for them. Damage trying to prolong the game. Trying indeed. Pinoy will take away that blue, or the red rather. A lot of wards invested, a lot of pink wards especially for both teams, but it really has been H2K's 
that have been keeping Diamond down. This time around, 0-0-1 hits his scoreline in this matchup. Not exactly what we expect, what we've come to expect from him. Well, that's true. He's been fantastic the last few weeks. He's been all over the place in terms of ganking, team fighting. We have seen a few times, though, where Diamond prefers the more farm-heavy style. Especially when playing Cedrine. But let's just see what happens mid lane here. They're engaging in. Yep, Betsy is able to take the lantern out. There's a hook on the other side, but it's not going to connect. And Edward takes the dark binding. It is a 4v5 in this middle, so Gambit don't want to fight it out as they have Cabo Shark pushing up top. And that was TP blown, so now a small advantage for Gambit with the cannon. Might be able to use that to create some side lane pressure for themselves. But as we just said here with, with, with Diamond, we've seen before where he prefers to farm. Early on when he plays the likes of Tijuani, and then he just focused on becoming a fantastic tank and engage tool in the fights, which is something he's really good at. So good at timing, okay, when can I engage? When should we fight? We'll have to do the same on Evelyn in this game for him. Going, as we said earlier, for that locket. So mixing it up, a little bit of AP, and then somewhat tanky from there, becoming the only front line for Gambit. Yeah, the unseen front line too. We'll see if it does work out for them. But for now, H2K still getting the better around the sides. They were able to clear the wave on the bottom and push it back just a little bit. Ryu's also in the top. Gambit trying three man strong in this middle, but Oduwame and Kasing are both there and they're pushing the wave back pretty quickly. Pinoy still not got nearly enough damage, but there is a flank being set up. We'll see if they can pull it off. They don't have the minion wave to do it just yet, but Kabashard and Diamond waiting the wings. But that was just a few seconds for Pinoy, and suddenly the tower is down to 50%, and we're only 22 minutes in. This Tristana is only going to get better and better and taking them down. So if Gambit managed to get to that point, where they're the ones who can group together, have the Lulu and Thresh to peel for Pinoy, then it's going to be so much about fast pushing in as a group, getting a few hits on a tower every single time they have the chance, and then just back away. Don't risk a massive engage coming from Maokai and Javan together. No, just sit there, get a few hits here, get a few hits on the tower itself, and play that game where you just take down objectives, get the global gold, and that's how you create your lead. My only worry is just, will they have enough damage in the potential team fight against a Maokai, which is gonna stack, obviously, pure defensive from him. The Javan's gonna do the same after this warrior enchant. Those two guys in front, if it's only Pinoy to really take them down, seeing as we would expect Kabocha to be diving the back line of H2K, he might not be able to do it for Pinoy himself. Oh, Edward goes really far for a moment, completes his windup, but he does get taken down. Here comes Kabocha with the Maelstrom in the side of H2K. Do they have the damage to finish a kill? They do. It's Diamond picking up Lulex. Odoamne, oh so low. Here comes Pinoy, but he's he getting it. chunked away. Kabocha manages to pick up a kill. It's a two for two. The top and jungle for an AD carry and support, and a mid goes down as well. Betsy following a double kill for Hyarnin. Very close fight, though, Deficio. Yeah, H2K pushing their lead a little bit here, and then Eddie tried to make the play, only got the hook onto Lulex, didn't really matter for him. He ended up dying, but then great ulti from Kabosha coming. Let's see once we get the replay. H2K are not done pushing. Still three guys. Fairly helpful for them will be a tower as well. Looks like that will be the case. It's taken down the turret score now. Five towers, 2-1. Let's take a look at how that fight unfolded, however. Right, so Eddie is trying to make the play. He wants to flash play onto Yarnen here and hopefully catch him out. Misses that one, and then Lulex. I think I hope didn't matter. Kabushat though, five man cannon ulti incoming. Beautiful setup from him. Pinoy is now safe in the back line because of the cannon zoning with Diamond, of course, on the Evelyn. So that's a good setup now. They get the first kill and start chasing. Oduamne goes down, and then the problem is Owex then. Pinoy jumps in, caught out. Betsy goes in, caught out as well. Quick turnaround from H2K. Yeah, we'll have to change that up. The crab gets pulled in, but it's Lulex who smites it down. H2K looking to reestablish the dragon control. That dragon is now live once again. It is two to none in favor of H2K. They can't clear out the vision once again. Edward and Diamond and Pinoy just trying to make something happen here. They've not got the speed up shrine, and they are going to seed some ground over as they need to clear away the minions from the middle. Dragon's actually procced. H2K not wasting any time. No, as soon as they see Betsy in the middle and they ping it, they start the Dragon Gambit. Has to basically regroup, because you don't want Betsy to flying around on a Lulu. No, she needs to be with your carry. So as soon as he was out of position, Gambit were unable to take the fight. Third Dragon, yeah, for H2K. It's normally Gambit we see get the early Dragons, and then have that fifth one as a potential way of winning later on. Not in this game. H2K, they're team controlling it.
Smart early game. Yeah. They, they do tend to give it up when there's a, a team that's very strong yeah, about yeah. trying to course, contest it. So in this case, yeah, they're really not getting an opportunity to play the game the way that they want to do. And as a result, H2K, you know, they find themselves up this lead at about 26 minutes in. And here we go. If they can catch Lulex, that would be something. But he is going to be able to EQ combo his way to safety. They're still trying to keep some map control up top here, but they're not getting much for it. Very surprised Janin is going for Blade as his second item on Koki. That's normally what you do if you're against a massive like tank in front line. And you know that your goal basically in team fights is just to take down these tanks. Let's see what happens here. Oh, I'm teleporting in. Yeah, there's the flank. He's gonna get hit by the box. However, Edward is the one who's going oh so low. Betsy caught with the dark binding, and it's gonna be Edward going down. Betsy in some trouble on the chase. The rest of H2K collapse around him, and another double kill goes over to Hyarnin. And, and like clockwork, they move back to mid. Actually, it looks like they might be heading for Baron. Another great teleport though from Odo Amna here on this Maokai. Gambit pushed off the mid lane. There was a ward behind them. Oh, combo shot. Oh, and he's caught up the combo. Ryu, can he pick the rest of it? They're going to connect at the very end. And Ryu, the last charge of the Spirit Rush. And now it's going to be Baron time. Can and Diamond, Diamond be the hero? It, yeah. He is also in danger right now from the rest of the team. I don't know how else to put it. But they're not even giving him an opportunity. Because Singh zoning away. He's going to go around the long side. Pinoy is here as well. But this Baron. It looks like it's going down. That is going to be taken out by Lulex. Diamond never had a chance for the steal. And a Baron picked up by H2K. But now it's time to fight. Can they pick a kill? Pinoy gets one. Knocks back into the team for a double kill. Odawamne now in the front. But H2K have forsaken him as Pinoy rocket jumps his way forward. He's got his eyes set on a triple. And Eddie wants to give it to him. The play, the twisted advance. One more shot. And Pinoy picks up another. And that really is the gamut we know right here. You lose the Baron. HK is saying, okay, we're five guys with Baron. We can easily just go top lane, catch that big wave coming in, and we can take a tower. And then suddenly you just realize Gamut is waiting with three guys. The only one's alive. And they just simply just catch you out. Two kills early for Pinot. You got the last one as well. Not sure if you got all three, but that was very, very important for them. Despite losing that Baron, which of course is terrible, they managed to at least secure some kills. Get a tower, Pinoy suddenly gonna start looking scary on this Tristana. Yeah, I mean that was really something Gambit needed, but that is that is so textbook them if you can even put what they do down on paper because it's so hard to describe. H2K get caught, get outflanked, they lose three members in that after securing the Baron. And now they've only got two more to work with to try to push these side lanes, so they're still in the lead, very much so. However, Gambit has some options. For sure. Last Whisper completed now. BET coming in next from Pinoy as well. And once he completes that one, he has enough AD for his E to really blow up these to uh, towers. So just need a bit more time inside of Gambit. Well, they're certainly getting it right now. They're getting it now, especially with those kills. They managed to stop the big wave as well. Also, look at the way Diamond has been involved. Yeah, 100% yeah, of those kills he has been a part of. Even if he's only secured one for himself, that's perfectly fine. He can play the jungle role in multiple ways and look at this flank right now. Oh, they throw down the Tormented Soil. That will reveal him. But now, does he have enough damage? No, not nearly to do anything to anyone. The rest of Gambit was not there just yet. Oda Wamne, though, is looking to start the fight. The box is down. Edward's going to flash away. Kabuchar zoning away the rest of the team. They're looking to pick off Oda Wamne, but Ryo coming to the rescue. There is going to be the Zanya's Hourglass. Lulix catching the rest of the members off guard. Lulix going so low, but not going down. Pinoy hopping, but he's not going to be able to get away as he was caught in the dark, finding a shutdown. Going over to Ryo. It's at 3 for 0 and H2K. Thunder back after that. Lulex is uh, pretty good at this game. EQ combos, and then he flashes after to get the knock up, and two guys from Gambit ulted him after as well, locked them in. And you saw how they played this fight. As soon as the ulti was popped from Kappa Shot, everyone just backed away. Backed away from the ulti, ran out, then they re-engaged in. Obviously, we're waiting for Ryu as well, coming from that top lane. Gambit trying to make a play because there was only four guys from H2K. Didn't work. So let's see what Diamond can do. Still 100% kill participation. He's been good in terms of the fighting. But the problem has been the lack of pressure early on from Gambit, which has allowed H2K to take down all these outer turrets so early. Lulix was just going to walk into the lane, push him down for himself and whatever laner he was assisting. Let's see if Simon can get a kill, though. 
Yeah, Lulix is a little bit low. He's got to know something's up because there is a lot of chase coming from Betsy. Oh, they may not even need it. Here we go. Here comes Diamond as he's revealed. Betsy's going to get the kill. The hate spike's helping out. Now they look for Hyarn and he's turned into a cupcake and he is going to Valkyrie his way to safety. But those double buffs, oh, he takes the charm. Diamond is caught. The damage is so real and Ryu trying to make the play. Oh, he's caught though. And they should be able to dish more damage back. But now they're looking for Betsy. In comes Benoit, just like Clockwork. And he's so low, but he's staying alive. Ryu going down what is going on this is the craziest skirmish we've seen in a while and here comes Pinoy Odoamne twisted advance back onto him and it just keeps going do they have the damage to take him out yes they Got do well. Pinoy kaboom man that's all you can I mean, say this is just again the gambit style yeah you fall behind who cares let's just keep walking and look for fights there was a pig onto Lulix first and then everyone just joined more kills for Gambit, four now for Pinoy. Betsy managed to get two for himself. They are trying to stay in this game. Simply by keep taking fights that a, normally a team would never take. And but Gambit them. makes it work. Yeah, now let's see if they can secure this dragon up. It's gonna be a close one. It's oh! actually stolen away by Lulex. So the dragon they had a chance to pick up, H2K manages to grab it back. That is their number four. Even so, it's so hard to call this one. Let's take a look back at the base. The minions are starting to wreck it, but Gambit, they're taking their time to get back and defend. And that's the thing, despite Gambit making some good plays in terms of these fights, they still fallen so far behind on the map itself that H2K can't afford giving up a few kills. They still have the pressure. And then, of course, that steal on the Dragon was so important. Let's see it again. Gambit are basically saying, we need some kills here. We're going to chase you. They find Lulix first. Jan, next one. Three guys now from Gambit. You can see Pinoy and Kapja on your minimap. They're going to walk down as well and join it. And it just becomes this extremely hard to predict game where random fights will appear left and right. Sick hook from Eddie. Cat oh, yeah. Ryu. Cupcake Old after friends. as well. We don't even need to see the rest. People just die. Yeah, yeah it, everyone just blew up at the end of all that. So H2K in the aftermath. They're trying to push five strong up the top side, but Pinoy is here. He's got the wave clear. The hook's going to connect on Ryu. Once again, the black shield comes too late as Pinoy avoids the charm. Gambit have mobilized the defense. They've got a nake, or nothing in the middle, I should say. The Super Minions were pushing up after that last fight, and all H2K have to do is wait for someone to wander into a bad position. Eddie throwing down a ward as he dodges a Dark Binding. Here we go, Tormented Swell. Pinoy there for the defense, but does he have enough damage? Diamond coming around for the flank. They've got to know what's happening here. There's one pink, but it's not yeah. in the right lane or the not right spotted. part of the jungle. No, he's not spotted yet. Ryu is moving. This is such a precarious situation. There's no flash for cover shot, so it's hard for him to follow Diamond onto the back line itself. Even if Diamond gets a good flank here, they need that flash ready for cover shot. Otherwise, H2K can start backing away again once the cannon ulti gets popped. All they have to do is wait for just a moment. Oh, oh. and maybe not, because Edward is going to wander too far forward, sticks his nose out, gets charmed, and taken down another tower. They look for the inhib. Gambit, they want to answer back, but it's going to be so hard in this 4v5 inhibitor number two now. It looks like it's going down, courtesy of Kjarn and, and the rest of H2K, and they back out happy. Big plays by Ryo. We've seen it a few times already. Whenever he plays his Ari, he's not afraid to just dash over the walls, land that charm in the late game. Really paying off for him right now. Baron, 10 seconds. Remember that next dragon as well. It's going to be number five. So if they get a Baron now... Gambit can't afford to defend this. They're moving away from their base, but there's minions pushing in up in the top side. The supers are starting well, to spawn to now. They I mean, they, they do have to do something, but it's still a 5v4 until Edward arrives. And even then, H2K, they can take their time about this. They have time on their side with two inhibitors yep. down. Just wait. Don't start it. Sit up wards around it and just sit there. Have the super minions do all the work. Wait till, like, Kabushak goes back to try and defend. He might, any, might not even be able to hold it on his own against two, super win su two lanes of super minions. And you just play patient. You don't need to risk Diamond stealing that Baron away from you or you being caught in the Baron pit itself into like a Cannon ulti and an Evelyn ulti and then Pinoy cleans up the whole thing, gets a pentakill, becomes the hero of the game. Okay, so it looks like they both decided to not play the game of chicken. H2K, they back away. That signals the chance for Gambit to back away to defend. They've got Cabo Shard up on the top. They've got an inhibitor back in the middle as a just respawn. So they have a little bit of breathing room if they can push the wave out in top to be able to control the Baron side. However, they're still in some dire straits here. They're down about 8,000 gold. Ha. On the other hand, they're still winning some fights. So if they don't get caught out, I mean, that whole thing was enabled by, by Eddie basically just getting picked off by Ryu. If that doesn't happen again, 
Gambit are still looking like a force to be reckoned with, but here comes H2K again trying to clear out the vision and keep it their own on the side of the Baron. Gambit can still win fights for sure, but keep in mind every time they have been able to pick up kills, it's been where they were chasing H2K, they managed to split up the whole thing and kind of single them out, and that's how they got the kills in a straight up 5 on 5. I think Gambit is still too far behind and their comp doesn't allow them to deal with this massive Maokai jumping in onto the likes of Pinoy and Shadow Man. Unless again they can catch someone out, we're gonna have to see. Baron is starting out by H2K. Kabajad is sitting in the top lane farming. They're gonna see him teleport because the minions keep going and he's backing away here. Let's see what he can do. He has home guards. He wants to proc that home guard first. Not in time, Baron is down. Yeah, Baron is down. They don't attempt to contest it in that case. They do see it does go. They will have the timer available. Dragon's another minute and a half away, however. Gambit have lost a good portion of map control after the fact, and four members of H2K are pushing up the middle. Five, excuse me. All five here. Again, you have one lane with pressure already. You don't really care about the bottom lane at this point because you know this mid lane is your goal. There's no pink wards from H2K, so they won't be able to spot Diamond unless they had one place before. They did. They pinked him out. So they know he's there. They had one down in the bush near the Raptor. So nice little setup for them. Really been good at spotting the flank every single time. Not yeah, he hasn't been able to do what he wants. I mean, still great in the kill participation when they do get the fights that they want, but they've just not been able to do much. The inhibitor, it goes in again. I feel like Gambit are running out of time here with these ba Baron empowered minions pushing up the middle. They've once again lost their mid inhibitor. Diamond's still looking for a flank, but H2K aren't giving it to him. No, we know Dragon is going to be the target. 30 seconds. No pinks around that one. So this should give an opening for Diamond to get the right engage. Flash is ready for Kappa Shot as well, so he can join in. Flash ulti, our blast. I think that's why we're going to see Kassane recall and get a pink ward for himself. There we go, two already picked up Ryu mm -hmm. and him. So now they can return back to this dragon, set it up properly. Not risk any steals from this Evelyn. No, 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 you want that fifth one. Then you go bottom lane, you take the last lane, and you should be able to close out the game. They can grab that fifth. It will be very important to them. Six seconds, and Gambit not really looking to contest. Oh, blue trinket is popped here. Diamond is going to run away. Well, he's running back in, actually. Now the dragon is proc. If he can pull the steal, that would be very, very important. You have like to force Diamond away. Die Don't in the process, take the risk. Though. Yeah, this is dangerous. He's wandering. Oh, oh okay, it's going okay. down. Nope, that is Drake number five. Gambit wasn't able to get involved in the rest of them were just pushing away at the minions that are now occupying the top and the middle waves. But everyone from H2K looking to take out that last remaining inhibitor and finish this game textbook fashion. Let's see if they can do it. That tower, it's going down oh so quick. Gambit is in some trouble. 10,000 gold down at 38 minutes. Can they play the hero? Here we go, Kabushart finding out Wamne. Lulex is found by Diamond, but they're getting chunked out by the rocket damage from the Corky. In comes Lulex, exhausted immediately, jumps in for a second win. Odawamne picks Pinoy. Gambit, they're falling apart. H2K, they're chasing them all the way back to the fountain. Betsy just barely staying alive as Ryu is able to push them back. One Nexus turret goes down. The other one's going to follow. And it looks like H2K, they've done it. They've snapped Gambit Gaming's win streak. They've taken them out and extend their own to seven in a row. GG, well played as the Nexus falls. Miles all around for H2K, of course. Fantastic game from them, honestly. Early game, the teleports from Omni were great. They knew exactly what Gambit were doing. They got these early outer turrets. They got all the dragons, and all the barons. And overall, textbook game from H2K. They know exactly which objectives to focus, when to push, how to push. We did see Gambit try. Had some of these guerrilla warfare team fights where they like, Chase you around. Oh, because they getting blocked by the camera. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, they're, they got to be happy with that. So few mistakes. And the ones that they did, the fights that they did lose, you can't really chalk that up to anything but just Gambit had the element of surprise. Yes. But exactly. they were able to completely shut down the Evelyn where it counted when they were trying to push. You see Diamond just a little pensive after that game. They tried something out. I mean, Credit to him, the scientific process. Not every jungler you try is going to work, but he's certainly running the gamut. Right, so for, I mean, for, the, for Diamond here, 100% kill participation, 2 kills, 8 assists, 10 kills total for Gambit. So you can't really fault him for his mid to late game performance, but Evelyn just doesn't offer you that much early on. And that was the problem for, for Gambit. He had had a fairly weak early game setup, especially with the Tristana as well, who needs more time. 
So when you have a jungler who couldn't really apply too much pressure to the lanes, you have an AD carry who needs, who needs time to scale up, you have a cannon as well who needs an hourglass before he really starts becoming a factor in team fights or in, in, in fights in, in general, that simply allowed H2K to do whatever they wanted to early on. It allowed them to take Lulix and say, where do we want to push down the first out of the turret? Okay, top, you go top lane now, push it in. You know that Evelyn won't be able to respond to you because she's currently farming the jungle, she drops too low from it. We are safe. First tower, second tower, third tower went down. And that was how they got the goal lead and used that really to simply take all the objectives after all the dragons, all the barons, or all the barons, two of yeah. them, but all the they dragons. They set up, too. I mean, it yeah, just, exactly. there was no way that Gambit could get involved in it. They gave too many away too early, which, I mean, that is kind of the style that Gambit's been, okay, we're going to back off if we can't take it cleanly. And HDK, knowing this, just went ahead and grabbed what they wanted. So, you know, they grabbed that win as well. So for a closer look at that win, the seventh straight for H2K, let's check in on stage where Quickshot is standing by to talk to Odawamne. Thank you very much, guys. I am joined by Odawamne, undefeated in seven games. Uh, whether or not you remember, your winning streak started after losing to Gambit. So you guys have avenged yourselves one and one now. Let's talk about the game. It was a slow start, slow laning phase, but then you guys just grabbed control after 20 minutes. Why did that happen and how was it so convincing? Uh, we just like playing safe in the laning phase because we know our objective control in the mid game and our team fights are really good and we have really good calls to move around the map in the mid game so we just want to secure an early safe game and then when we reached the mid game we just started making plays around the map we did smart ganks to take towers we have really good Drake, Drake control and we just made TP plays around the map did playing against an Evelyn affect your decision making in any way? It's the first time we've seen it in 2015 and we know the threat of the invisible champions always there. How focused were your team on that pick? Well, it affected our game a lot because one of the reasons we played so safe in the early game was because of Evelyn and we just never saw her on the map for the first 10 minutes. So we just focused on playing safe on the laning phase and then we knew that if she doesn't get ganks in the early game, then our her mid game is really weak and our team fights are going to be superior. So we just waited to see her around the map and then we just started grouping. Now let's talk a little bit about your team's performance. I mentioned already 7-0. and oh. You guys at the end of today will be tied for second with SK or Fnatic, whoever loses that game. Did you th expect yourself and the team's performance to be this good after losing Febivin, you know, relatively soon before starting LCS? Well, yeah, we never expected to be this high. My expectations at the beginning of the season were middle of the pack because Fabian was our core member in the team. We played with him for about a year. So I definitely didn't expect this performance, but it feels that we can even aim higher for playoffs and possibly top two. Well, definitely best of luck for that. And I'm looking forward to seeing the rest of the split and HTK in the playoffs. For now, we're going to head back up to the analyst desk to wrap up that game. Thank you so much, Trevor. Uh, we heard it already there from Oduwamne saying that it affected the way they played their early game, the fact that there wasn't Evelyn in there. So I want to turn the question on Gambit and Evelyn because they didn't do anything in the early game, but the only chance they really had was in the two versus two, and then it was still a small window. Yeah, basically, um, the only push in lane for for, uh, for HK was basically like the top lane that Morgana and Corky pushing in Thresh and, and Tristana. Uh, what could have happened is that Eve maybe gets the gang on top lane, but the thing was that due to the lane swap or like how how it started, um, basically uh, Jarvan got top side control early game, so everyone was kind of scared to to get into the top side, and she kind of wasted a bit of time around mid lane, was delayed on the red buff because she kind of expected that maybe maybe Lulex came it comes from red to red or anything like that, but. They missed the the, uh, the opportunity to gank top lane, basically make a play, get ahead through the early game, and then have a, a stronger mid game coming in. And it may have been a misplay, but it may have just been miscommunication. Yeah, in retrospect, that was their only window. And I'm going to quote you word for word when we were preparing uh, the past week for this game. You said, if H2K manages to get some kind of advantage early and translates that into objectives, there's nothing that can stop them. They can win the game and yeah. <laughs> behold. <laughs> okay, like. Uh, I gotta take credit for that one, but um, <laughs> the important part is for 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 Gambit and for HK. Like Gambit always seems to start out slow. Have a, like the first 10, 15 minutes of the game are like maybe they fall behind like one to two k. Uh, we've seen that versus CW. We've seen that versus another team. I can't remember though. Sorry, but 
Either way, uh, what happens for, for HK in, in the first 15 minutes, however, is that they, they always achieve control. So if the window has become big enough and the difference has become big enough for HK to contest every objective without counterplay, especially versus late game screen and comp like uh, Gambit had, it's really easy for them to steamroll. And they did this, this game. Yeah, and uh, it was going very well for them, very fast. We actually have a replay up on the screen where Gamet did try to make something happen, but at this point it's already too late, especially when your Maokai is so big. Yeah, Edward basically trying to get a, um, a flash play in, uh, misses the play, then hits the hook on Lulex, which is not ideal. He gets one shot in the team fight, but the team fight itself still progresses pretty nicely because Cabo Shard and Diamond are pretty huge due to the ultimates, and they actually get two kills onto Lulex, and I think it's going to be out of now, exactly. But then uh, the game mechanic basically works against Pino. He gets binded, then uh, pulls a Pino at Jenkins and basically jumps in and gets one shot, which is not ideal, obviously, as an AK, and he misses the timing of getting getting the reset. Pino Jenkins. I love that. we got to remember that one. Um, any conclusions to draw for this one? H2K is now second. What does this mean for Gambit? Uh, for Gambit, it just means that they have to work harder in the next uh, few weeks because um, they had the ambitions, or they have still have the ambitions, uh, way, like especially in Diamond, if you can kind of see that, that he wants to work harder uh, and would probably, like said, he would beat himself two years ago and stuff like that. Um, what, what it means for them is that they have to adapt and basically like, maybe get away from, from some of the picks that they regularly do, like something like the Tushana coming in like every game almost. Mm -hmm. And they have to kind of find more ways to play the game than just like uh, like hope for, hope for enemies to throw mid game and then transfer it into uh, some kind of mid game to late game lead. Yeah, for Diamond as well. Nidalee and Sejuani banned out. They banned out Rek'Sai, then falling back on that uh, Evelyn. Maybe we're going to have to see something else coming out from him. Before we take a break, though, let's check in with you guys in the Twitter sphere. Earlier, we asked you which team do you think will jump into one of the six playoff spots and why. The first one is from at Altair Evanos and writes H2K are going to make it to playoffs. They are a solid lineup with probably handling picks and bans very well. Um, solid lineup, playoff spot, number one? Ah, uh, yeah, n number one, not, but I, I think right now what they're doing right, uh, right now is pretty great. They have such a solid lineup. They always translate early game leads into objective control, etc. PP, which means that they will always have evenish games and they always have the chance to win. So they're a secure playoff spot for me too. Next one is from Ad Creation Man. I think SK will be pushed out of the top two by Gambit. They're playing extremely well, and SK are falling in form. Um, after this game from Gambit, not so sure. What do you think? Uh, it depends on how how internal issues may like uh, occur, and anything that how may they, how they may be fixed. But it's more it's really about like Gambit uh, picking up again after this loss, which is like kind of brutal, especially after like such a long winning streak. You always have the feeling of you have to win. Instead of like you come into each game and just like be even and just like hope to win, and they have to do that. Last tweet is from at Cronai chimed in with Crepo, with Crepo leading. I think Elements can make a great run to the playoffs. His playmaking and roaming are incredible. Like we've only seen two games in one at least. That was the truth. Uh, they're up against Copenhagen Wolves next. What do you think he brings? I think what Crepo brings is basically like something that knocks a broad in his first game too. It's this fearlessness he knows that he has the potential to always do stuff and he will not not uh, like be scared to do that like he will always go for the play if he can and i think that's a great attribute to have especially in a team that has been criticized for such passive passive uh, play overall yep and thank you guys for chiming in of course and remember to stay in the discussion all week with the hashtag lcs now we're about to step away, but when we return, Elements will face the Copenhagen Wolves and look to tie for a playoff position in the standings, while the Wolves set their sights on fourth place. Stay tuned. Oh, also, Kebo, I fucked your mom up. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's mine. If we lose, you know who is it, what's the reason. Do they have the damage to finish a kill? They do. It's Diamond, picking up Lulex. Oh, to Wamne. Oh, so oh, low. Gonna get Spinoy, but he's getting it. chunked away. Stress, 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 stress. No, 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 no,